Hello everyone, this is Mike Levin just doing a throwaway video. I'm not even really particularly planning on, on keeping this one. But I had gone off to public storage, as you saw from my prior videos, to round up some laptops to redo this test because it got caught in a uh, reboot loop. I'll probably uh, post that fail using this particular Surface Pro, Surface <clears throat> Portfolio Pro. Look at these, these are just beautiful. They were wonderful devices in their time, but they have all served their purpose and we've moved on to newer, better, cheaper Surface Pros, not Surface Pros, Surface Laptops, Surface Laptops. The tech that Microsoft works on for the, for the Surface Tablets, here's a Surface Tablet, see? I had a Surface tablet. I know about the kickstand and I know about this, you know, weird stuff that you do to turn it into a, a laptop. I went through that phase. I went through that phase. I got it out of my system. As close as this gets to a quality low profile keyboard, it fails, it fails, it fails. It is not the feeling you need in a laptop. So this is what I moved on to that is actually a good model. This is just the plain old Surface laptop. Microsoft Surface laptop, not Pro. About 800 bucks. And it simulates the, simulates the, it, it copies all the things that are good about the MacBook Air. This is Microsoft's MacBook Air. 800 bucks, got an Intel processor in there, so you're not gonna have the weirdness of the ARM64 binaries and everything not being available. I mean, I know about that stuff. I've been on ARM since the beginning. I have ARM servers that look like wall power wall warts. I've been from Marvel. I know this stuff. <clears throat> ARM is wonderful. It's wonderful in your phones. It will be wonderful in your laptops and PCs. Once the drivers stabilize, once all the wheels are returning and have that 64-bit ARM binary in there for Windows, for Macintosh. It's a big deal. It's going to take a while. Let it settle out. You don't have to be bleeding edge. So Surface Book is touchscreen, right? You know, this is actually a high-quality touchscreen. It's better than a MacBook Air because you got the Microsoft Stylus, right? This is just a throwaway video, so I'm not hung up on talking about <clears throat> all the WSL install stuff that's coming up, all right? But it doesn't have to be charged. Let me just open this. Boy, this is liberating. I've done so many videos that I try and do the perfect take. There's the battery inside of it. By having one of these in there that seems to last forever, forever, ever, forever, ever, you don't have to charge it. That agonizing process of charging the Apple Pencil just goes away. <clears throat> Now let me talk about that, which is both a button for modifying when you're drawing for different things you can make it do, but also it's an eraser. It works as an eraser in the software. No special configuration. You just draw and you erase. And you draw and you erase. Not on an iPad, not on an iPad Pro that supports the Apple Pencil, but just on the regular run-of-the-mill El Cheapo Microsoft Surface laptop. It also is magnetic. Let's see the Apple Pencil do this. There is it. Oh, make me eat my words. Yeah, that was on this guy here that I was doing that on, so it works on these. Oh, uh, well, this is another story. This is my portfolio. This is not the other portfolio you were looking at, but those Apple Pencils, I mean those, uh, Microsoft stylus is there, stick right on. Now I had added a crack screen in this and it was never the same since. They have to use like heat guns and pull, it's terrible. So I think Microsoft has committed themselves to easier fixing because the amount of money, let me just show you the amount of money. Oh my God, I don't regret it. It's a learning experience and I'm even using this these things to help me blow up on YouTube now, but <clears throat> here's some Microsoft equipment right here. 2000 
$500, right there. The current one, $800. The, the one that I'm uh, doing this on, it's another $800, you know, so 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, let's call it 6,500. And then this, uh, no, not that, I already covered that. This Surface, Surface laptop. Surface, not laptop, but just the actual Surface with a keyboard. I don't know, is it 500, 600? But we'll round it up to an even. <clears throat> Five, six, seven, you know, and even $7,000. That's on the conservative side. $7,000, these plus that. <clears throat> I've put in, <clears throat> and I probably even even deducted it from my taxes. I'm terrible at that kind of stuff. It's just, I love life. And sometimes <clears throat> you have to just forge ahead. You have to just power ahead, power ahead. Paperwork slows you down. You know, nattering negativism slows you down. But you need to go through the process. You need to internalize. You need to make these things part of you. Get the experience. And that pays back in many, many great, greater ways than, you know, being an accountant. So, I almost cried when I came home because my wife, realizing what I was doing, said, oh, why don't you use this one? I'm like, well, <clears throat> honestly, I thought I might have had that in storage, but is it at home? And she's like, yeah. And so I get home and she has started this process. This resetting the PC was not my doing. My wife, realizing that I'm trying to blow up on YouTube, that I think teaching people how to do WSL space Minus, minus, install, as you'll be seeing. This is the thing I made for the video coming up. Teaching people how to do this is the biggest thing since the Raspberry Pi, period. Windows 11 enables it. It's hard on Windows 10. It's easy on Windows 11. The fact that it's easy on Windows 11 changes the world as much as a $35 computer changed the world in 2012. I would like to be the Pied Piper. I'm rough around the edges. But who better to bring the message of Unix slash Linux to the world than someone who was born... I, let's see how close I was born. I've actually... I've actually wondered this, and I don't really know. I was born in Parsippany, New Jersey. Pompton Plains, Parsippany, New Jersey. Unix was born in the same year I was born. Unix was born in 1970. I was born in 1970. Unix was born in Murray Hill, New Jersey. I was born in Pompton Plains, New Jersey. I've been throwing out the term born 50 years from where Unix was born, but I don't know. Let's see how true that is. You see what time it is, all right? So it's, it's work time. I'm going to have to get to work soon, but call this my lunch break, you know? I will bop back and forth between the things I need to do for work and the things I need to do for... what the world needs. The fourth circle of the Yakagai. What you love, what you're good at, what you get paid for, what the world needs. What the world needs is a way off of Windows and Macs. What the world needs is more people being genuinely technologically literate. Genuinely technologically literate, meaning not beholden to the vendors. Okay, how close was I born? Murray Hill, New Jersey, NJ. Let's just get the correct spelling, right? That's what we need, Murray Hill, New Jersey. Oh, I should instapaper that. Am I in incognito mode? Why don't I see Instapaper link? I am probably in incognito mode. Anyway, the other one is uh, Parsippany, Pompton Plains. Pompton Plains, New Jersey. 
I'll copy that. The next thing we need is maps.google.com. Whoops. Oh, I see. It's because I'm in uh, Chrome as opposed to... Yeah, I'm usually not in Chrome. I'm actually usually in Edge. So Murray Hill goes into Maps. Mary Hill, New Jersey. I mean, it knows. It knows where I am, probably through my IP, geolocating through IP. And then uh, I guess we'll do directions to Pompton Plains, New Jersey, and see how long it says it is between the two. Yeah, they cannot calculate directions between the two. Let's choose a particular place, Pomp and Plains. Hospital. I don't know the name of the hospital I was particularly bored at. But now it's giving some, uh... huh, four minutes. I was born four minutes from where Unix was invented. The distance between Murray Hill, is that right? No, it's not. Let's try Murray Hill. Don't get overexcited, Mike. Yeah, that's more like it. I was born about an hour away. Here's Murray Hill. That looks like, oh, that's Murray Hill, New York City. That, I, is that, I don't think that's correct. There's Murray Hill, New Jersey, which I'm pretty sure Murray Hill, let's say, put Nokia in there. Nokia Bell Labs, right? Okay. Is this the New York one? I'm putting New York in there. Pompton. No. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. You have to excuse me while I completely make a mess of this. There we go, 34 minutes. Nokia Bell Labs. It's still looking like it's Manhattan, it's showing here. So where is the thing that, uh, maybe it's this third one, did I put that in there? Still showing that medical center, so I don't think this is reflecting this. Providence, New Jersey. Let's hit directions. Maybe I just need to hit directions again. I'll reverse that. Why is this not updating? Because it's still showing Manhattan there. I know that's Manhattan. There is a Murray Hill in Manhattan. I've had locks there many times. Oh, there it goes, updating. There we go. All right, 35 minutes. I was born 35 minutes from where Unix was invented. How many months? So 35 minutes away from where Unix was invented by Ken Thompson in Murray Hill, New Jersey, Bell Labs facilities. And you can see this is resetting, it's at 91%. So I'm basically waiting for this to finish while I give you some more information about myself. <clears throat> so, uh, when was Unix invented? 1969. So maybe not quite the year I was born. <clears throat> Unix, multi-user computer operating system in the late 20th century, widely used for internet servers. It's used for everything. Come on, it's taken over the world. The name Unix was put on, was a pun on Multics, an earlier time-sharing computer. I told, told you about that. Unix was quickly adapted for another computer and the team ported it to PDP-11 by late 1970. In 1969, a team led by Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie created the first version of Unix for the PDP-7 minicomputer. 
which was chosen mainly because of Thompson's familiarity with the system from his hobby work. So I'm not going to be able to get it down to the months, but within about a half hour, I was born within about a half hour from where Unix was invented, and I was born, give or take, a year, 1969 through 1970, give or take a year from where, where Unix was invented. Now, that would be enough for me to have this sort of spiritual connection, this sort of connection through osmosis. But there was some other activity happening on this East Coast version of the West Coast, right? There was stuff happening here. It wasn't all about Silicon Valley. What was happening here? Well, in addition to all the pre-tech boom, all the pre-Silicon Valley stuff, which is Bell Labs, Ma Bell, right? Technology before technology, information systems, where where information technology was invented, where it was infotech, the technology of information invented. Well, let's take a look. Information, science. Uh, I happen to know the guy's name more or less. Um, oh, do I, do I? Let's just say uh, Bell. Bell Labs. I mean, I led the, the question, but his, his name is going to show up here real easy because he's pretty famous. Oh, see, so that's just Bell Labs. We don't need that. Shannon? Sean Shannon. Shannon. S H. S H. A. Shannon? What's this guy's name? Invented. information technology. Do I even have the word, the right word is that? I see information technology implies IT, which implies the modern digital age. Claude Shannon, Claude Shannon. The information. The information is a book that I have read that covered the rise of the information age. Claude Shannon, I think I have it right. I think I have it right, Claude Shannon. Yeah, that's him. Claude, Shan Claude Elwood Shannon, known as the father of information theory. People didn't know what a bit was before Claude Shannon. He's like, hey, here's a bit. I got a great bit for you. Let's, in, let's call this thing, this intangible thing that we know is part of systems. Let's call it information. That was Claude Shannon. Yeah, it came from out of MIT. So much of this stuff came from out of MIT. Childhood, logic circuits, wartime research. There you go, Bell Labs, Bell Labs, right? Another Bell Labs employee. So the actual dawn of the information age was New York, New Jersey. New York, New Jersey, Princeton University first you know, commercial computer, not the first real computer. That was Alan Turing in the UK, cracking the Enigma code, beating the Russians before we beat the Russians with atomic bombs. Boom, boom. We were British. We keep secrets. We break secrets. We keep secrets. Break secrets. Break secrets. Keep secrets. Stiff upper lip, chap. Ah, <sighs> installing Windows, 13% done. Don't turn off your PC. We'll get to this soon. This is all the staging for this. I am so sorry, Addy. All right, coffee. I need some coffee. Of Alan Turing. 
For two months early in 1943, Shannon came into contact with the leading British mathematician, Alan Turing, 1943. Ah, oh, Jesus. Oh, Turing had been posted to Washington to share with the U.S. Navy's crypto analytic service the methods used by British government code and cipher school at Bletchley Park to break ciphers used by the U-boats in the northern Atlantic. He was also interested in the encipherment of speech and to this end spent time at Bell Labs. Shannon and Turing met at tea time in the cafeteria. Turing showed Shannon his 1936 paper that defined what is now known as the universal Turing machine. This impressed Shannon as many of its ideas complemented his own. What wonderful, wonderful stuff. How can people be into football? When real life is this interesting and it's playing out all around us today. This is not just history. This is playing out right now today with the rise of general artificial intelligence. It might actually be here. We don't know. If the British could keep the cracking of the German codes a secret, do you think that the development of a general artificial intelligence, something smart enough to survey the landscape and to make predictions about the future, would intentionally be let known? There's no boom. It's not an atomic bomb. The use of such technology does not reveal itself. General AI exists. Anti-gravity exists, too, for that matter. And it's not aliens, either. Just come on, people. Credit the human race. Credit humanity. Give us a little credit for being able to put two and two together from things we know. From observable, testable, and reproducible phenomenon that's been known since before the war. Since before the World War II. It's not paranoid conspiracy nuts. And... And I think paranoid conspiracy nuts are paranoid conspiracy nuts. Uh, the whole QAnon movement, everything having to do with the teachings of William Cooper, it's bullshit. It's fantasy fiction built on a kernel of reality. A kernel, tiny, tiny kernel of reality. That kernel of reality is that various countries can use what we know to be the energy in all things, zero-point energy it comes off as white noise because it's scrambled in all directions. You, pop, you know, apply a strong enough field, it's no longer scrambled in all directions. It's polarized. And once you have polarized ambient energy, you can climb it like a ladder for starters. All right, let's see where we are and see if my ne next video can get started. Jesus. And then I have to get to work. One video, then work. Installing Windows 67. Don't turn off the PC. This will take a while. All right. Claude Shannon. Let's get this stuff into Instapaper. So to get it into Instapaper, I simply go to where I'm keeping, you know, my normal browser that's here. I paste it in, and here's my Instapaper link. There we go. Information theory. Instapaper that. These are double, triple Instapapers. You know, I should keep the statistics of how many times I like double, triple, quad, you know, the statistics of which URLs I've Instapapered over and over. It could tell me how interested I am in things and information theory is going to be at the top of that list because it escapes many other sciences. 
Information is weird. If you don't believe information is weird, make a copy of something and ask yourself whether that impacted, took away from, got entangled with, exists separate, totally separate from the original copy. How much energy did it take to produce that copy? Does the energy it took to make the copy have anything necessarily to do with the information itself? Is information necessarily tied to the physical state of things? Necessarily? Maybe. Certainly for you know, practical encoding uses. Okay, so here we are. I don't even know if it's Windows 10. It looks like it's going to be Windows 10. Let's walk through this together. English? All right. Yes. Oh, it's Cortana. And I'm here to help. This is Windows 10. Horrible. Use your voice or the keyboard along the way. And if you'd like me to stay quiet, just select the little microphone icon towards the bottom of your screen. If you need an assistive screen reader, press the Windows, Control, and Enter keys at the same time to turn on narrator. Okay, enough intro. Let's dig in. Two things. First, your region is set to the United States. It's going to be Windows 10. Yes. Let's carry through. Oh, jeez. Your keyboard is set to US. Want to stick with that? Yes. Yes. Do you also type with another keyboard layout? No. 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 Now let's get you connected to a network. That way you can get up. Now type your credentials. Just so you know, connecting to a network now could save you some time later. If you want to get that out of the way, choose yes. Now let's get you connected to a network. I thought I just that did. Way you can get updates, apps, oh, and I get it. Your credentials. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Do we? Sit back and relax while we work our magic. Please don't turn off your device. Magic. I talk about magic. Microsoft installs should not talk about magic. Yeah, they got rid of it, you know. All this cutesy stuff is not in the Windows 11 install, I'll tell you that. I think after I do this, I'm going to post the feedback, the, the I'm going to post that infinite loop thing. Process, it's good to capture process, isn't it? Good historical stuff. Lots of good documentation. Keep good documentation. It'll serve you well. And it's gonna be a Windows 10 install, so I'll probably demonstrate how to get WSL2 running on Windows 10, since this represents an opportunity. That's like Windows 11. This isn't common. Ugh.
next step, the legal step. In short, in short, sell your soul. Type your email address or phone number, then follow the instructions to sign in. I'll catch up with you once that's done. All right, moment of truth, making sure it didn't lose its uh, installed state, if it, as, you, as it were. It's a little difficult because I switch over to uh, secure mode here. And then there's Authenticator. All right, let's see if we've got, there we go, 34. Hey, nice, nice. At least this doesn't have to be broken up into two videos. Use Windows Hello to unlock your PC. All right, fine, fine, set up. Okay, hold still for a second. We need to learn to recognize you. Want to set up a pin? Skip. We can work some magic. Remind me later. Or no thanks. There's a no thanks. Ah. No, there should be a no thanks there. How horrible. Subscribe to Microsoft 365. Select set it up on your device. With Xbox Game. No thanks. Hey, look. Not now. Duncan Idaho is the Quizach Hatterock. Microsoft is a rear device. Okay. So what do I do? Do I teach people how to do this on Windows 10 who are sticking to their guns with Windows 10 and get over those difficult things? Or do I get into that really, you know, what most people are going to be doing experience Windows 11? I guess I could always reset to Windows 10 later. It's probably a smaller audience by now. It's harder to do. This is a Windows 11 trick. It's a Windows 11 trick. Let's choose Windows 11. Get it. Next. Almost done now. We just need to get a few more things polished up for you and Windows will be all yours. Looking forward to helping out. Thirty-three minutes. Uh. Be strong, Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown. When Charlie Brown kicks at the football, he lands flat on his back. It is now Charlie Brown's responsibility to communicate clearly with Lucy. Lucy, I plan on kicking that football. What are you going to do? Oh, Charlie Brown, it's Thanksgiving. It's an honor to be able to no, know that's not my question, Lucy. When I try and kick that football, what are you going to do? Oh, Charlie Brown, you should you should just have so such happiness that you have the opportunity to No, no, Lucy. What are you going to do? If Lucy does not answer, do not try and kick that football. Charlie Brown is stupid. Stupidity is repeating the old patterns without learning. When the undesired effect occurs and you repeat the same behavior and expect different results, that's stupidity. Charlie Brown has to wise up. All right, here we are on Windows 11, and this is where the tutorial is going to begin.
thank you for joining me. And I'll see you for a moment when I pick up from 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 there. <laughs>